<laughs> okay, so we are live for candidates breakdown round 12. So this will be just a very quick overview over what happened in the games. Um, so in the Giri uh, with Black against Kawana game, we got some normal Sicilian possession out of the opening. I probably have a feeling that white should be slightly better somewhere. There was this strange computer suggestion H5, H4 to put the pawn on H3, which is quite funny. Um, my feeling was sort of this was a way for white to play for an advantage. Um, but I don't think it's very much. Hi, uh, Max, and hi, Jeremy and Kirk. Nice to see you guys. Um, so instead of Kawana, he went all in. He really had to win the game to even hope for a miracle, which I think is not there. And sort of around here, I think he realized there's no advantage to be had. And sort of, I think he was just very disappointed. Um, because you could see that in let's put forward a few moves. Uh, they had this position here. And here Kawana within three seconds played rook c1, which is sort of, yeah, you can defend the pawn and, and it's, it looks very natural and so on. But probably is leading down a, a position that isn't very good. And this is a sliding scale. If we look at this position, uh, we can see that... Uh, uh, the black's doing quite well. Black's comfortable, but it's 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 not really a disaster uh, for white if he plays a few accurate moves. But Kawana just played very quickly, and he played also this bishop d2, where this is just very passive. He played then came bishop h4. He played queen e3, as if black's just going to allow him to take the pawn. And a few moves later, with some good positional play from Giri, which he's good at. We get into a position where the knight on d5 will be exchanged, and we have a very strong knight against a very bad bishop. And it's just very difficult to, to do anything. So let's forward a little bit. Here, probably not everything has been done in the best way by the players. Chess is difficult. Um, and here again, Kawana quickly played queen f2. And there's just nothing uh, left here. So here and they played back and forwards a little bit and before a final combination which um was nothing but here white had a chance to play queen c7 i'm sure kawana rejected it because after a, a rook a3 queen d6 black wins with rook f3 and queen e2 it's just made um but here h4 could uh, confuse matters a little bit position still bad but um, yeah, blacks, blacks, of course, a good deal better. But at least here, black has to show something. It was clear that Kawana just didn't care anymore. And um, we're going to see this in another game as well. So uh, I think this is sort of an important narrative that in this tournament, we, we always see that players, they are... Um, unhappy with how things have gone and it's very hard for them to play the remaining games at some point. Okay, so Ding Lian against Grischuk, we had this uh, variation in the Queen's, uh, Queen's Gambit that has been played uh, endlessly. Uh, we get some, some structure like this and actually here knight e2 is a pretty uncommon move. The only one who had ever played it was Grischuk in an internet game, in my database at least. And okay, it was black was fine, solid and fine. And then uh, here, move 21, black's fine, but uh, just a little mistake. It's nothing special, but um, if black plays h5, of course we have to worry about can white ever play f5 or g5 and so on, g4 and so on. But really it's not happening. Like knight e5, queen c8 is a very good move, defending the f5 square. Um, but after bishop f6, sort of white got a little bit of a press. Just a little bit. 
and they were playing around a lot like this because uh, it is really a maneuvering game they have set themselves up for. And black still was fine here. Um, so we get to move 40. And here, the accurate move is probably rook a4. There also the other decent move, but rook a3 wasn't very, uh, very good. Um, uh, so take, take in queen d2. And here c6 is hanging and black has to basically be passive. And white can slowly create some pressure. Black has to think about how to deal with the fact that white is going to play knight c3 and queen a2. Um, so Aratya says he predicted that all games today would be draw. Um, I think you're wrong. <laughs> Let's say it like this. OK, so here, Grace Jockey committed Hariki. And knight d7, knight d2. He could have gone backwards here. But the position is, is, is going to be very bad. Um, White's going to play knight d4, king g3, queen e3, and f5. It's going to be very hard to hold. Instead, he tried some activity here. It just didn't work. And he had to resign already. Um, so this is a question from Maracha. Is it true that most mistakes happens on moves 39 to 41? Uh, more than 30, on move 39 and 41 rather than move 40? Um, I've often seen mistakes on move 41 where people, they sort of have a mental breakdown and like the time, time control is over and suddenly they stop thinking. Um, why move 39 should be have more mistakes than move 40? I'm not really sure. Uh, that's a very interesting thing. I'd like to know more about that, maybe another time. OK, so there was some uh, accusations earlier in the tournament that Alexango, he uh, threw the game with uh, Nepomniachtchi, which I found, frankly, to be entirely ridiculous. Um, you know, he, he had a, a bad game and uh, and, and that, that can happen. And it happened again today, except today was, was even uglier. So um, we're not going to go through the, the end game as such today. Uh, here, this is here, by the way, this is a queen b6 sort of meant to be the, the way to play against this system. And I looked up and this here is actually really an interesting idea. And then there's been played some games like here. And OK, I stopped here on clear because computer says bishop e7, only knight bd7 has been played. And well, it's that's interesting. Instead came uh, the game like this, very normal line, like this, c3. Gives the option to put the bishop on d3 if on knight d7. Knight f6 is a bit strange, it's not the normal move. Knight d7, bishop d3 is normal, but knight f6, bishop c4. And OK, if you here, if you place bishop h5, I like white, but this is best. He played queen c7, which is horrendous. For example, take, and uh, uh, if he takes on e4, bishop f4, already here, black cannot really develop because of, uh, of simple tricks. So you'll have to uh, to make some retreats or so on. Um, so bishop f3, queen f3 here. And already we're talking about an almost lost position. For example, let's say queen c5. And here, uh, with, with various ideas, e5 and knight b3 and various tricks. And for example, here, you can imagine something like this, knight d6 is the threat. And all the pieces just coming in, and it's a winning position because of this. So here he played queen h5. And basically, everything's wrong with the, the black position here. And he played rook g1. Uh, and it's just a horrible endgame. White is ahead in development. 
his uh, pieces are better. E5 is coming in many positions. It's very hard for Black to find out uh, a way to continue the game even. And he tried knight d7 and after uh, check, uh, he sort of got his king a little bit in the game. But white just held the, the, the pawn. So in the end, the in game looked like this. And uh, if they played on a little bit, it could have looked like this, which is very, very unpleasant with the Sukh Swan. The question, was I surprised by this F3 variation was played in the candidates? Um, I think uh, MVL was taking uh, Alexander out of theory because he's shown to be softer. Uh, Jonathan is asking, should Alexanka really be there? There are so many other players that are competitive. Well, I have a very simple answer to that, which is um, as long as we have the wildcard system, um, then we have the wildcard system. And, and the reason why we have the wildcard system is somebody has to play for the candidates tournament. Uh, somebody has to pay. And traditionally, this has been uh, Rajabo's father-in-law, who played a, a num paid for paid a number of times. He paid for Rajabo to participate. He paid for Mamajarov to participate. Armenia once paid, so Aronian could participate. Uh, the tournament was played in Russia and instead of Azerbaijan, and there was some. Uh, so there. So there's a question from Robert here. What do you think is the main difference between Alexenko and the other players? Is it the level of opening preparation? Clearly, um, the difference between what the top players know about the opening, where they know the directions in, in all lines. They maybe not don't know the details in every line, uh, but they know the main directions. Um, Alexenko is struggling there to keep up. Um, and... That really has been a problem uh, for him in this tournament. So that's why I think MVL took him out to this uh, offbeat territory today uh, to see what he had there. Um, but I also think when he is in a, in a worse position, Alexenko, he does crumble to, to dust in a way that the other players don't. Okay, Wang Hao against Nepomniachi, trying for absolutely nothing. Um, so I'm not really sure about like a move like h6 here. And, uh, in my understanding, white should be ever so slightly more pleasant here. Um, yeah, so uh, here we, we have a number of of very odd moves. So first of all, g3, I don't understand why it's important to play this move, but maybe he didn't want to allow bishop f4. Um, but I, I really don't know. Um, but here, here, bishop h3, I, I just don't understand why you would put the bishop there uh, instead of putting it on d3. I, I just don't understand. I, I understand somehow He's maybe wanting to have c5 and want to have the bishop on g2, but I don't see that it is especially more powerful there. And uh, as the game progressed, uh, we saw that he was really struggling putting his pieces on, on decent squares. So um, let's go to like here. So the end game is still equal, but for me, it seems like here the knight's on the way to c4. It, to me, it seems like uh, Nepomniachtchi is very slowly outplaying Wang Hao. And the only question is if all the pieces um, will, uh, uh, will be exchanged first. And uh, Jonathan Blackburn reminds me of, uh, of uh, something uh, Yusupov told me once when I was trying to criticize him for playing the Petrov. He's like, oh, come on. If I play the French and they take on d5, it's the same thing. So um, so he sees it the other way around, that uh, you can't avoid it anyway, so might as well go for it. Um, here, uh, Wang Hao is sort of trying to uh, force a, a draw. Um, but here there's some problems. If it goes here, then this is very unpleasant. 
he doesn't have c4 knight takes c4 is uh, it's more unpleasant here played here and they developed some pieces but here he started to play poorly and you know i don't see anything uh wrong with like ethically wrong with what was happening here so uh he played uh, rook e7 here where the rook is perfectly placed where it is uh, the the piece that's bad is the king he needs to bring uh, the king out the next two moves should be king e2 or king e3 and put the king in the d line um, and uh, El Segal is pointing out that Alexeo has no experience playing super tournaments and suddenly playing the the biggest super tournament there is, the candidates, uh, first time round must be very tough. Um, okay, so here now suddenly white was in trouble. Uh, okay, king g1. And here there, there are a number of ways for black to play. Uh, but Nepomniachi characteristically here, he played fast and superficial. Um, we have domination here. The knight on f1 is bad. And here, if he had played h4, he would uh, have been very close to winning. Uh, so here, rook d5, knight c3 is one point, and still knight c3. And white will, will sort of have to uh, give up here. Here, black is threatening h3, rook g2, and knight e2 mate. So white has to create counterplay, uh, but he can't take on d4. And here, black's very close to winning, but it's not quite there, but it's, it's definitely very bad. But he, he played for a few moves that weren't very accurate and it looked nice, but it's sort of hard to do anything. And here, okay, this was just bad. Uh, knight d2, knight d6 and king f1 and try to come out. And here he should hold. It's still holding that white is doing and he's still suffering. But on the other hand, it will work. He will hold this endgame. He has rook h8 coming. He can play uh, something like knight c4 or knight e4 and, and try to take the d pawn at the right time. Instead, he played this g4 and tried to come around and take this pawn. This also succeeded. And this endgame is, is horrible. And uh, someone said that uh, Wang Hao in the press conference, which I haven't seen yet, uh, said that he blundered somewhere. And it was here. Here, if he keeps uh, the rook where it is, um, we're probably heading for a, uh, for a draw. I could imagine something like knight e4 uh, should be OK to, to make the draw. Um, Jeremy points out that uh, here, rook e7 is ignoring uh, the worst place piece, which is the king. Um, and, and you can argue sort of what he what he missed, but for sure here, when he missed here, knight b2 is not the only strong move, but it's really nice. Knight d1, knight f2 is coming. So he had to, to do something, and now he lost his pawn. And uh, the game continued like this. Maybe the knight is not best place here. And and here one hour resigned. Um, and I was asked by an absent friend, uh, is this appropriate? And my answer is two, twofold. Uh, one is um, that for, you know, players should be allowed to to resign in a, in a bad position if he's not doing it to, to help another player, which he's not. I, I just don't believe that there's any uh, uh, any anti-Giri or pro uh feelings from Wang Hao. He was just, he just wanted not to have nothing more to do with this game. And I cannot see that that should not be allowed. Um, the position after, let's say, rookie eight, rookie three, something like this. I had this running on the computer for five minutes just before we started. And it's very close to there being a forced win. Um, 
sort of the idea is uh, rook, uh, rook a2, rook g2, and knight e2 with mate on g1. But when we play rook a2, then there's knight g3. And it's sort of about with the king timing it, maybe the white rook will have to be placed on an unfortunate square. And th there's a few tricks here and there. And I'm going to have to, uh, once we finish in a moment, I'm going to have to see if I can work out a, a definitive uh, way to the full point for black. Um, but sort of like those who want to make a uh, narrative about Nepomniachtchi being lucky that Wang Hao resigned or, or something in that order, I think you should have a very hard look at the, at the Kawana Giri game. Because um, as much as uh, people said that uh, Nepomniachtchi against Alexeyev was a uh, uh, was a bad game, or or they saying this here was an early resignation. I think the 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 most appalling game I have seen in this tournament uh, was Kawana against Giri, and Giri is the only one who's at all a contender to uh, to catch Nepomniachtchi and. Uh, the score is at the moment that Nepomniachtchi is half a point ahead of Giri, two rounds to go, but he also has the ultimate tiebreak compared to Giri that he beat him in round one while they drew the game in round eight. Uh, I'm, I'm being asked which game I'll choose for the game of the day. I do think the game of the day is Kawana against Giri. I think my annotations will be much more words and explanation uh, and maybe a little bit of pocket psychology, then they will be um, chess insights. Uh, I do think that uh, the narrative of the day is a mental one. Uh, it's, one it's one of players being tired, being disappointed, just wanted to go home, maybe being disgusted with their own level of play. And the reason we saw uh, four victories today uh, was not because the players were more adventurous in the opening. L let me just remind you where we started here. Um, the reason why we saw four decisive games today uh, was that mentally some of the players are struggling. Uh, it's, it's a tough tournament. It's, it's really a, a tough field uh, to play and I don't want to be critical of anyone, including Wang Hao. So, um, so my point with, is it appropriate that he resigned? And my answer will have to be yes. Um, so, Aracha is predicting that Giri Nepomniachtchi and Maxim Vecchia Legrave will end on the same final score. I think that's going to be hard. He also earlier quoted Hare Krishna for saying that the main difference between 26, 2700 players are defensive skills. And I, I, I actually don't agree entirely on that, but that's also part of it. Um, What do I think of Giri's opening uh, choice when having prepared the Sveshnikov? Um, actually, he was prepared to play the Sveshnikov today. We can do that as a final thing. Um, here, I, uh, I believe that uh, he did not want to play against Bishop b5. Uh, instead, he played this move order, where White can avoid this, the, the Sveshnikov with this. Um, but the most normal is, of course, that uh, we return to the Sveshnikov like this. I think that shall be the end of, uh, of this video. I don't want it to be too long. Uh, I will see those of you who are members of killchesstraining.com tomorrow night for the game of the week uh, video. Uh, and for everyone else who uh, find these videos interesting, uh, I will be back with a breakdown of uh, round 30.